just kind of pick up on where we are kind of looking back and then looking um, forward. So in this room, we wrote Secure Rural Schools. It's done a lot of good, but clearly there are areas where we've got to do, do better. I mean, when people tell me, hey, we like this because otherwise we would have had three days of, of school, I say, great, but aren't you still having problems with your roads and your law enforcement and you've still got challenges having languages or after school? So we've got to do um, better and in particular, we got to get rural communities off this roller coaster where they just have to wait, kind of like the perils of Pauline till the last minute, trying to figure out if they're going to have money to fix their road and the like. So where we are is we're going to have to figure out how to get secure rural schools for another couple of years at least. And we got to lock that down because without that safety net, all the problems that Mr. Dilly and all of you have talked about will get even more serious. So that is priority business number one. Then what we want to do starting today is flesh out this endowment kind of approach. And I just want to tell you what Senators Crapo and Rich and Senator Merkley and I have introduced. This would be a permanent endowment fund so that you'd have money for schools and roads and basic services. The Congress would make an initial investment into the fund. The principal gets invested and the interest is used to make the county payments for these essential services. Uh, because of the initial seed money provided by the Congress, at no time would county payments drop below the 2017 levels. And that has been important to counties as well. We've worked with the National Association of Counties, of course, uh, on this. We, uh, as I talked about earlier, we are multiple use people on this you know, committee. We understand protecting special places, but we're for multiple use uh, as well. And we want to see the safety net grow. So the legislation deposits forest revenue sh uh, sharing payments into the endowment each year to increase the county payments. So in effect, as the forests are more appropriately managed and as timber harvests grow, so too will payments to the counties. So what's this all about? Stable, reliable funding, no more roller coaster, and a continued commitment to the link between forest management and the economic vitality of rural counties across the country. Now, uh, I mentioned that we've got to have secure rural schools until we get the endowment in place. But I want to ask you, Mr. Rowley, so the record is clear about the question that Senator Craig and I were confronted with when we got this program off the, to the races. And that is the administration understands that there will be no compromise of environmental values, no breach of the federal environmental laws, the federal environmental laws as we envision it in an endowment approach, and we will, of course, continue to work with the administration uh, on this, is a bedrock requirement, and you all uh, understand that and are supportive of it. Thank you for that history, and absolutely so. There's nothing in this bill that would even begin to suggest we should vary from complying with the National Environmental Policy Act, the Endangered Species Act, Clean Water Act, Clean Air Act, or any of those other laws that are asking for environmental protections. That is a totally separate issue and not tied to this funding conversation. So thanks for asking. Very, very good. And I think my colleagues may also want to get into this. We always at home hear this debate between coupling and decoupling the county payments. I think the chair and I have talked about this over the years and revenue sharing. What the endowment proposal has sought to do, working with the counties, is to try to find a kind of perhaps more nimble way, sometimes people want to call it elegant, I'll settle for nimble, uh, way to increase payments to counties without directly coupling it to revenue sharing. It is a way to kind of transcend all of the complications associated um, with it. And uh, you all have made it clear. In fact, I'll just go down the road. Does anybody have any problem? I've got my time 
um, expiring, protecting the language that ensures that bedrock environmental laws are uh, going to be continued as we try to go forward with a modernized kind of forestry stool, as I've described it. Let's just go down the row. Any problem? Good. Mr. Rowley's already said yes, and I think no, the yeah. local communities and uh, yeah. the National Association. All right. Madam, uh, Mr. Recorder, let it uh, be noted that we have asked explicitly at this first hearing um, with respect to the endowment of the agencies, of the local communities, of something that has been always kind of controversial when we've talked about this in the past. I want to thank all of you for your cooperation. This is going to be a thoroughly bipartisan effort. It was in creating the predecessor of it, and now we're kind of updating the uh, forestry stool. And Madam Chair, look forward to working with you. We've worked on this a long time, and uh, under your leadership, I think we've got an opportunity to really modernize what we're doing to help the communities. Well, we're looking for a long-term solution. So thank you, for, thank you. Uh, for your guidance on this. Senator